What's up Outdoorsman Greg here and today I'm showing you how to cut down a full-size Hawk helium stick into something that is smaller, lighter, faster, and easier to use. Now modifying a set of Hawk helium sticks isn't exactly a new idea. Uh, I believe Dave T, Dave Toms, Dave T1963 is his YouTube channel. He was the first guy to do it and it spawned a whole bunch of guys cutting down their sticks. I have only done it recently, um, only because I've always used muddy sticks or lone wolf sticks. Uh, and I just recently got a set of these Hawk Helium sticks and I gotta tell you, they are my favorite for the money. I ended up cutting these down to 22 inches, so it's about 20 inches in between steps. And I just love these sticks. They've got the folding double step, which is a big deal. They stack nicely. I modified it with the DIY Versa button. Um, I silenced them down. I, they stack nicely. There's just not a lot of downsides to these sticks. So if you're looking at uh, getting a set of Hawk Helium sticks, this is how I recommend you modify them. The first step is to take apart your sticks. You'll only need an Allen key and a wrench to do this. There are lots of nuts and bolts and metal washers and nylon washers. Make sure you store those appropriately because they're easy to lose. Next, we're going to make our template or jig. This is going to make putting holes in the same spots a little bit faster and more efficient. You could do each stick separately with a measuring tape, but I don't recommend it. I trace the outline of the stick on a long piece of cardboard and cut it out with the utility knife. Then I made a little stopper at the top of the template by cutting out some more cardboard and taping it to the top of my template. This allows me to put the template in the same spot on each stick. Once you get your template made, I use these measurements for my stick. You can adjust them if you want your stick longer or shorter, but these worked well for me. Make sure you leave at least two inches between the bottom standoff to your holes for your steps. If you don't leave enough space, your standoffs won't have enough room to nest together when you stack them. After you've drilled little holes in your cardboard template, I marked each stick with the Sharpie. Remember, measure twice and cut once. Make sure everything is exactly right. The standoff and the rubber stopper holes are really important to get spot on. You can be off a little bit with your step holes and it won't matter that much, but pay close attention to your standoff and rubber stopper holes. Next, it's time to cut the stick. You could do this with a hacksaw pretty easily. I used a miter saw. Yes, that is a pair of gym shorts I'm using to protect my arms. This is redneck engineering, baby. I cut and drilled one stick first and built it to completion. That way, if something was screwed up, I only had to replace one stick, not all three. After I cut the sticks, I drilled all my holes with the drill press. You could probably do this with a hand drill, but the drill press made it pretty easy. I used a quarter inch bit for the standoff and step holes. I used a 24 drill bit for a 1024 machine screw to use with the rubber stoppers. This worked great. Take your time and don't get in a rush especially with those standoff holes and the rubber stopper holes. You need to be precise with those. Now it's time to put everything back together. Putting on the steps is kind of a pain in the butt. You've got four washers you need to get back in place. The two gray nylon washers are sandwiched in between the step and the stick channel. This keeps the step silent when you rotate it in and out of position. However, they can be a bit of a pain to get in place. You also have to get your steps pretty dang tight. I noticed if I didn't really crank on it, the step was way too loose and could move around too easily. After you tighten it down, it holds really well and won't move when you don't want it to. Installing the rubber stoppers is pretty straightforward. I tapped the two holes with the 1024 tap and die kit and used a 3 quarter inch 1024 machine screw to hold it in place. Keep in mind this rubber stopper mod will help you stack your sticks more silently. They'll even help them stick together. 
but you still need to bungee them together for transport. Links to the rubber stoppers I used are in the description below. After the rubber stoppers, you can install your Versa button. I used a 1 inch fender washer, a 1 and a half inch long quarter 20 stainless steel bolt, and a 3 8 inch long aluminum spacer. You could upgrade to a bigger grade 8 bolt if you're a big dude and want more strength. I got this part of the design from the DIY Sportsman and it works great. This is actually one of my favorite parts of this DIY project. These sticks need a bungee cord system to keep them super tight and I figured the existing cutouts in the I-beam structure would work great. I left the tails a little long on my bungee cord in case I ever needed to add a fourth stick or stack something else on top of my sticks. I'm sure I could have found a simple J-hook somewhere online or in a hardware store, but that's not as cool as making your own with Instamorph. Now if you're not familiar with Instamorph, it's a super cool DIY plastic. You put it in boiling water and it turns really pliable. Then you just mold it into the shape you want. All I needed was a simple J hook with a tail big enough to drill a hole for my bungee cord. I molded the Instamorph around the smallest cutout in the stick. This stuff is really idiot proof. If it gets too hard, just drop it back in the hot water for a bit and it will loosen back up. Then you can continue to mold it in the shape you need. The cool thing about Instamorph is once you let it rest in cold water for about three minutes, it's rock hard. Then you can drill it, paint it, sand it, whatever floats your boat. I like eliminating big heavy buckles whenever possible. In my opinion, the best option for climbing sticks are the Mini Versas from Tethered. These are woven Dyneema daisy chain style strap that is perfect for this application. The Mini Versas are made specifically for small Versa buttons like my custom version, the Lone Wolf custom gear sticks, or the Hunting Beast gear sticks. There is also a larger version called the Versa straps that work with the larger Lone Wolf Versa button or the buttons that come from the factory with Hawk Heliums or other climbing sticks. One of the coolest things about these mini Versas is the bungee cord loop that Carl Kasuth came up with. Carl designed the Versa strap and he added this awesome bungee cord that loops right over your Versa button. No more flapping straps or figuring out some weird way to attach them to your climbing stick. The bungee cord is simple and genius. If you have the old sticks, those mods will work great. If you buy a set of new sticks from Hawk, the 2019 version, you're gonna get the ones with the suction cups and the little posts. So the modifications work exactly the same. Uh, I'll give you all the links, but you cut them down exactly the same. You just change where you drill your holes for the posts and for the suction cup. As you can see, it is not a very difficult DIY project to tackle. You can do it. I promise you, you can do it. DIYing your gear is a lot of fun. It helps you uh, take care of some of the time in the off season to keep you focused on hunting. And I personally DIY pretty much every piece of gear that I buy. There's almost nothing that I buy that comes straight off the shelf and goes into the woods with me. But I'm weird. Maybe you're not like me. Um, maybe you're just getting started in the DIY world. You can do this, I promise. So get you a set of Hawk Helium sticks uh, or a set of any of your favorite climbing sticks and you can do some of these same mods pretty easily. Hopefully this video helped you. Hopefully it made sense and hopefully it inspires you to go out and go hunting or fishing or hiking or biking or something that just gets you outdoors.